difficult two weeks we've ever um, experienced in our life uh, in, this, in this industry. Why? Why um, is it the most difficult period of your life? You know, Anheuser-Busch, they held a social knife over all of our heads here and they dropped it very irresponsibly. It, it threw us into turmoil by standing on our biblical faith. It put us at odds with other people that didn't, that, that didn't take that stance. And that brought us into hell on earth. You know, us lefties have been uh, laughing it up a lot lately, making fun of hypersensitive right-wingers melting down over Bud Light's brand deal with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. But, you know, as we laugh it up, we're forgetting that normal people are getting hurt. People like Joe Pinovich, the owner of Grill's Restaurant in Florida, who we just heard from, and he described this entire ordeal as the most difficult weeks of his life. Still think this is funny, leftists? <laughs> Feel so bad for him. <laughs> Listen, these right-wing piss babies will spend an entire year shrieking about cancel culture and left-wing snowflakes only to become the very embodiment of that left-wing caricature themselves. It's amazing, isn't it? But that's to be expected when every accusation is a confession. But this whole kerfuffle over Bud Light has culminated in political commentary from right-wingers that is so fucking absurd, it is quite literally indistinguishable from parody at this point. So I'm going to give you an example here. So we're going to look at an actual video put out by the governor of Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who, by the way, brought back child labor in her state. The children look incredibly enthusiastic about this. Anyways, in this video, she's going to announce that she's selling koozies promoting real women. America presents Real Women of Politics. Real Women of Politics. Today, we salute all the real woman leaders of this great country. Real women don't have to fake it. Real women. Doing real things. Real women. I gotta say, the guy in the beginning really st strikes me as very juvenile, very childlike. Just his behavior over Budweiser sending out some cans to some trans influencer like who really gives a rat's ass like who cares right um now let's be clear i know a lot of folks on the left sort of have their viewpoint and be very dismissive of all other just other viewpoints right that's not me i think perhaps that clarity comes from me essentially being raised in essentially a conservative family didn't know what that word was didn't know anything about politics growing up um i've never known my father to be political in any way i've never heard him talking any politics or anything of that sort but looking back on things it was definitely a conservative home very traditional values you know um wanting to hold on to traditional values and culture and rejecting a lot of what's happening you know modern culture everything is going too far and it's too sexual and too too uh sinful right that's kind of the perspective so maybe that gives me a unique perspective i don't know but i can uh, well also i think part of it's my empathy right i can empathize and think from a perspective of i mean again i have an advantage because i thought like many of these people in some way anyway i think about the way i thought about gay people as a child as a result of the indoctrination that i received as a child which these people always talk about indoctrination they don't want to talk about this indoctrination but i was indoctrinated into christianity one of the things and of course it's different flavors of christianity right but in the flavor that i was raised in homosexuality is sinful it's evil it's something to be disgusted with and I was disgusted. So I can remember how I felt about people that were homosexual, um, how it conflicted with my then values. I can therefore empathize with, you know, I can, I can both disagree with and also empathize with certain similar views about the trans community. So that being said, I'm not completely dismissive of this guy's concerns. 
I recognize they're coming from and I can empathize with his views on that this is sick or disgusting, it's uh, poisonous, like whatever the terms he might ascribe to this. Um, but in the same token, I don't empathize with his juvenile sort of reaction to it, right? You can you can look at this and say that this is sad, that, I mean, I don't know why it matters what Budweiser, it's not like Budweiser is some kind of a, you know, it's, it's I could see if, if maybe the Pope was doing this or maybe this was a a company that had sort of a wholesome reputation um maybe it was a religious organization or something some element that you know it it, it would be very disheartening to see but this is a beer company right? this is a beer company right we're talking about a product that causes so much death in this country. All the drunk driving and families torn apart. Uh, I mean, my own family, I have at least one drunk. There's more than one. But, you know, there's members of my family that I, I pretty much didn't have a, a relationship with because of this beer, right? So the company that's making this poison says something or or sends out some cans with this trans person on there. And rather than just the point of view that I can empathize with, which is like, oh, this trans stuff is disgusting, whatever, these guys are promoting it. Like, I could I could recognize, I could disagree with that, but also be like, okay, I, I get it. But this other side where, again, you know, the reaction is is that of, let's say this person respects the Pope, and the Pope did this, or... Again, any sort of reputable organization, but a bear company, <laughs> like a bear company, bro. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would, I would recognize and empathize with just simply that this is disgusting. But this guy's talking about like this is the worst thing in his life. I don't know the exact wording that he uses, but he, he he's such like over the top about this in terms of. The impact of it or whatever. I mean, with with all the other stuff that I hear these guys talking about, right? The gay agenda and the supposedly grooming kids in school and whatever. In that greater context with all that stuff going on, right? You still have the energy and emotional reaction to a bear company putting out some cans with a trans guy not even to the public, to that specific influencer, right? Which means if it wasn't for the right-wing propaganda machine, we wouldn't even know about it, right? Just like how I don't know much about much that's going on in the gay community or whatever, even though I live in a blue city, because that stuff is not being pushed in my face anywhere other than from conservatives. Conservatives are the only ones that are shoving the gay and and and... and trans, lifestyle, whatever, outside of conservatism, I don't see or hear anything, almost anything, right? I don't know anybody trans. Um, I don't really know anyone that, uh, like, around me. I think there's one guy, I haven't even seen him in ages, who I think is a gay couple down the street or something. Never see him, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and when I met him, you know, I had asked him some questions and... He wasn't even down with the gay community, right? He was just, you know, he's a guy who liked guys, right? But he wasn't into, like, the community and, like, you know, pushing some kind of rhetoric or agenda. Like, he was just a guy who, that's his sexual preference. That's a private thing that he's not out there shoving. Like, that's, that, that's my experience, right? But every day, the gay stuff is being thrust on me by conservatives every day. Oh, they're grooming our kids and trans this and trans that, look what the gay beer. Like again, the trans beer thing, Here, here's the example. If it wasn't for conservatives, I wouldn't even know they did this because look at the reality. They did this as a, as a sort of an influencer sort of campaign with this trans person. Now I don't follow this trans person, so I wouldn't see it, right? It would go, you know, they send the cans to this guy. I'm sure he would tweet about it. I don't know if that's an uh, uh, agreed upon arrangement or he would just naturally do it, but I'm sure he would tweet out to his followers or something, right? And since I'm not a follower, I wouldn't even see him promoting it, right? So I wouldn't know that they that they sent it to him, and I wouldn't know, I wouldn't see his promotion of it. So it'd be completely invisible to me. It's the right wing that, that it took to, to drag this up and shove it in my face. Like, oh, look, they put out the trans can, like, you know what I'm saying? But again, 
it's one thing to not like this. It's another thing to have such an over-the-top reaction to it. And again, in the context of so much other stuff, like you say all the stuff is good and it's all bad, but yet this one thing, an isolated thing, this is not this is not something being pushed in the schools. They're not selling the cans. Like you can't go in the store and you're gonna see this thing. This is isolated. This is a targeted thing, a promotional thing that they targeted the specific community. Right? They sent it specifically to them. Not promoting, not grooming. That's not something your kids would see. I mean, now your kids will see it because of you, right? Conservatives made this thing a big thing. Now everyone's talking about it, right? Because right wingers made it a thing. They promoted this to the masses, right? Budweiser did this targeted thing to a targeted community, and that targeted person would have sent it out to his community, kept in that trans bubble. Right wingers went in there and extracted it and made all this fuss. So now everyone knows about this can thing. So they're essentially helping to promote the supposed gay agenda, right? Just like how they promote our open borders, right? Who else is out there that keeps talking about how easy it is to come to this country and all its benefits and whatever? Who's putting that energy out there, right? If it wasn't for right wingers, I wouldn't even be thinking about the border, right? I don't even think about what's going on at the border. They're the ones who keep talking about the border and it's open borders and letting everybody in and they're just coming over. Like, the world is seeing this, right? So much, much more people are aware of a supposed, uh, you know, free cookies for everyone, right? The biggest promoters of that are right-wingers. They're the ones broadcasting to the world, our borders are open. Come on in, right? Biden's going to give you everything. They're going to give you, you know, DeSantis is going to give you private jet flights to, to Martha's Vineyard and everything. Come on in. Like, it's the craziest thing. These are the people talking about this stuff, and yet they're the biggest promoters of it. Again, if not for them, I wouldn't even be aware of a lot of this, like, gay agenda and trans whatever. I don't see it. I'm in Blue Sea. I don't see it. I don't, nobody's asking me to use no pronouns or nothing like that. But let's get back to Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Humanist Report. Um, he says in the video, quite ironically, uh, or he implies that the right wing is getting all triggered, being sensitive um, over something very simple. And there's a very flippant sort of attitude of like, uh, who cares uh, of what, you know, Budweiser is doing. It suggests that he is promoting the idea that the left would not react in a similar way. Um, the general left, you know, okay, let's start with number one. Of course, the left doesn't care about what Budweiser is doing regarding a trans campaign when they're supportive of it, right? They're the ones all about inclusivity and all this kind of stuff. So why would they be triggered by Budweiser trying to appeal to a community that they support. Um, the only thing would be the anti-capitalistic view, which would be seeing the truth of the matter, that they don't really care about the trans community, they're just using them to sell beer, right? So I could see them having a little bit of a problem there, but otherwise, why would they be bothered by it? Of course they're not bothered by it, because what they're doing is something that you support, generally speaking, right? Now, if you really get into, you know, sort of, I don't know, far left or even, you know, the kind of people that, Ben Shapiro would like to talk about liberal meltdown type folks. Um, I could see them having a similar reaction to the reverse, right? They're not going to care about this trans thing because they're getting something to support. But what if, what if, what if a company that they respected, let's say for example, that uh, the Young Turks started platforming right wing talking points, right? Let's say the Young Turks started suggesting, well, the Young Turks um, started doing a collab with Steven Crowder, right? And they have Steven Crowder on their platform, and they're super friendly with him, and they start recommending Steven Crowder to their viewers, or just doing something that sort of normalizes Steven Crowder. Um, I think a lot of folks on the left would be very, very have a big, big problem with that. Um, let's say that... CNN started a show. Let's say CNN hired Matt Gates to run a show on their program, um, where they normalize him and he's there, like pushing out some right wing talking points. No pushback from CNN. He's just on there, like you know, pushing his right wing propaganda. Um, 
I could see a lot of people on the left being triggered by that. Um, I'm trying to think of a company that the left would respect. It's hard for me to come up with one. The left is usually leaning to the anti-capitalist side, so not going to be generally fans of corporations unless it's the Fox News left, right? Fox News calls on the disagrees with them, the left. We're talking about centrists, but uh, real left-wing folks generally not big on corporations. I don't know. I can't really think of any companies. Everything I think of is media related. Um, so I don't know. Imagine Vox Media or um, any sort of progressive media or left wing media network does a collab with, you know, someone like Charlie Kirk, <laughs> right? Um, and with this collab, they essentially are in some way promoting some kind of right-wing ideology that the left detests. Now, the general people on the left, I don't think are going to have an unhinged reaction necessarily, but they'll definitely have a problem with it. But I could definitely see some of the, you know, some of the wackiest people that you might see at a Black Lives Matter protest, you know, something in, in, in Seattle, I mean, you see some really whacked up. Be at these events, just saying the craziest things. Um, you know, the, the type that would say abolish the police. I could definitely see, you know, those type of unhinged people having an unhinged reaction to a progressive media network platforming, you know, someone like Matt Gates and normalizing him and promoting some right wing idea that they find detestable um so the idea that you know the left is all level-headed and cool and they don't care about what some company does some promotion or whatever and the the right is so ridiculous i mean yes a lot of these right-wingers do take it to another level it's that juvenile like this guy in the beginning of this video um i think that is i don't even know if i would even uh, that's a tough one because, again, like I illustrated earlier, you do have these sort of far left radical lunatics who see getting super engaged and, and hostile, you know, going to Black Lives Matter protest and abolish the police mumbo jumbo. There, there was a Donald Trump's favorite line, um, pigs in a blanket, fry them up like bacon, I don't know, whatever it was. Um, all cops a bastard. I could definitely see that crowd having... A similarly juvenile unhinged reaction so I guess it's it's a matter of uh, extremists you know um, that guy in the beginning of his video is probably more in the line of uh, an extreme far-right type guy um, and that's how these people act right they're kind of like in a cult beyond reason you can't talk to him listen to Ben Shapiro he would ascribe that to just the left listen to a lot of the left-wing influencers they describe it just to the right but that's because both sides, you know, don't really want to acknowledge their extremists. Um, and some will hear me say that and, and think I'm putting them on the same level. But that's not, I'm not putting them on the same level. I think anyone who's watched my content for any time knows that I find uh, a significant difference between what's happening, you know, in the extreme right versus extreme left. But as I always say, it's not a competition. I don't really care who's more extreme than the other. I don't support a centrist attitude, and I don't believe that both sides are equal. But even if, let's say you have two, two sides are dishonest, one is 5 or 10 or even 20% more dishonest than the other side, so I'm supposed to just focus on that and ignore the reality that, the objective reality, they're both dishonest, right? That's not me, right? I don't care that one side is 20% more dishonest than the other, theoretically, right? Um, I just care that they're both dishonest, right? My focus is more on you guys are both dishonest, right? Who is more dishonest than the other? Who cares? I want both sides to be honest, right? That's, that's my, that's my point, right? That's what I, I expect. Anyway, that being said, and ironically, Mr. Humanist Report actually mentioned some of what I just mentioned at the very end of his video where most people wouldn't see but I'll end this video with this imagine if I don't know some corporation McDonald's 
did a brand deal with Charlie Kirk. Do you think that anyone would shriek that loudly on the left or liberals? Do you think that anyone would be as equally outraged? Doubtful. But regardless, conservatives are going to conservative. And that means be completely hypocritical and cry about cancel culture while simultaneously being the mob that they have historically denounced. And when I say historically, I mean for the past couple of years or so when they made cancel culture the boogeyman. But now